Hey there, Mini Wargamers. Owen here from Mini Wargaming, bringing you another discussion about the new Tau Codex. So, here we are. First, last video, talked about all the HQs. This video, gonna talk about a bit the troops. Now, there's only two troop choices. We've got your Fire Warriors, and we've got Kroot. Now, I'm not doing anything, Dave. You can just uh, you can just keep going. Yeah. Don't worry about what's going what's on over going here. What's going on? What's happening? We may or may not be talking about Tau. Definitely not. Well, Make, not if it makes you feel better, yeah, it's definitely not. So we're just talking about how much better they are than Chaos. Ah, oh, that's a funny joke. Yeah, continue. All right. So Fire Warriors. Basically, they're the same as they always were. The only big difference, they're cheaper, and you get grenades for free. And EMP grenades. EMP grenades in the uh, previous codex, according to the way they were described, is on a four, to f four or five they glance, and on a six they do a pen. Now they're just haywire. They do two to five as a glance, six as a pen. And they're only, they're, they're cheaper than they were before, so everybody can outfit with them. And you automatically get defensive grenades now. You don't have to pay for that and the Fire Warriors themselves have all gone down in price. They have the same stat line. That's pretty much it. The, uh, you can upgrade one of your Fire Warriors to be a Shas Ui, or Shas, Shas, Shas Ui. Anyway, he's basically your Sergeant buff in the leadership, which is always good because we're not exactly the bravest fighters around, but he can only have drones and a marker light, or aura marker light. So I mean, it's kind of good because you can give the drones an integrate or networked marker lights, and then have that unit use its own marker light if you give them to the sergeant. But the sergeant's own marker light, if you were to give him one, can't be used by that unit. So the only way I could see it working well is if you had units of fire warriors, each with their sergeants having marker lights, and have unit A mark and shoot. Unit B, mark and use that mark and shoot. And then Unit C, use that mark and shoot. And that way, the first unit has it the rough, roughest. And then from there, they can steadily work their way through. Uh, the usual Fire Warrior tactics all still apply. Clump up in little bundles. But actually, you know what? I don't think that one's the case anymore. Originally, I had said when playing Tau is have your guys in little tight bundles and spread them out as much as you can and just shoot and shoot and let them kill one and then shoot the guy who kills that one and then kill another one and shoot the guy who kills that one. But they have supporting fire now. So if you have five fire warrior units within six inches of each other or one in the middle and then like another one here, here, here. So you've got this kind of like star formation going. They charge the front one, everybody overwatches. So five units of 12 guys, that's uh, six, yeah, 60 guys, jeez. And they're all shooting twice, unless there's an ethereal there where they're all shooting three times because they've got Storm of Fire. So that's 180 shots, and they're hitting on sixes, which kind of sucks, but not a big deal because you're shooting it 180 times. You're gonna get hits, you're gonna do wounds because your guns are strength five. So, five units. I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably going to get my other Fire Warriors painted up for this, along with drones. I actually. The new rules for the drones or the other drones, the missile pod drones are a good addition, I think, to the uh, regular troop units because they're strength seven. And that gives you a fairly reliable, like you know when you pop shot at rhinos, because your regular guys can do it, they can glance it to death. But the missile pods are basically that little bit of reliability when you want to shoot a light armored vehicle. And they also will help you if you're firing at enemy aircraft because I expect to be doing that a lot because when you play, you're going to be up against planes and everyone knows if you go to any kind of like local tournament, the winner is going to be the guy who was able to fit the most planes in his army. Not anymore. Tower are going to fix that. Skyfire, Interceptor, just insane volleys of shots. We're going to totally shut that down. Moving on though, I don't really want to have to talk about this, but I know that somebody's going to be like, well, they're good now. Crew. They're cheaper than they were. They get a save for free now. They get that six up save and you don't even have to pay for it. They're just garbage. 
if the only I'll be right back. <sighs> they're they're useless. Like, why why would you bring them? You can. They they can have sniper rounds now, so I guess you can bring them as a sniper unit and put them in a tree because then it'd be an easy way to bring a troop choice that snipes as opposed to bringing the heavy right or the, the sniper teams. So, I mean, that's cool. And there are troops, so if you really, really didn't like bringing fire warriors, I don't know why you would not like them. You could bring them, but... They're, they're, they're worse orc by, boys. They always have been. They Okay, yes, they're more accurate now and they have slightly better guns than they did before because you can outfit them with sniper rounds. Yeah, that's supposed to make me want to bring them in. And they're cheaper than fire warriors. Woo, that's a good reason. If you really wanted, you could bring an entire swarm of them. Or you could bring a swarm of fire warriors and pay the extra 100 or whatever points it's going to be and then end up getting insanely better ac or better shots with better equipment. But nope, nope. Want to bring the crew? Okay. So big blobs of crew with terrible saves, but good saves if they're in forests and sniper rifles. And... Or the sniper upgrades, you have to spend a little bit for that. And then you could... Oh man. I just can't do it. They're like... I have the same problem with crew as Dave does with Tau in general. Can't... I. Bring orcs. They're just they're the same cost now. You might as well just bring them. They're tougher, stronger on the charge. They have more attacks. They have the mob rule. You can bring them in giant herds. Like there's no they have the knob who is unparalleled in the entire Tau army. Nobody can compete with the guy with a power fist other than the Onager fit, Onager gauntlet, which is amazing. But I mean, why? You can just bring orcs. It's and the war boss is cheated as dirt, so you can just throw a thirty point or whatever point cost he is war boss in there, and there you go. You're all ready to go with your giant two groups of sixty or thirty boys with knobs and big shooters or rockets, and then they've all got two close combat weapons, or they've got shooters, and then they give you basically the same amount of hits as you would get from the few sniper rifles hitting on fours. You'd get uh, sixty shots hitting on fives instead of. 20 shots hitting on fours. I, I, I can't do it. Basically, they still aren't good enough. I'm not going to be getting them. I'm not going to use them. They're stupid looking. They have nothing going for them. I don't like what they look like. I don't like how they play. It's my opinion. So if you don't like, if you don't agree, leave a comment below. Explain how you would play them. I can't think of anything other than the snipe spam. Maybe you could no, because a dedicate if unless you're shoot unless you're playing like another shooty army and not Tau now because if they got their uh, supporting fire off against a charge of crew, the crew would just get wiped out. Like they the few that if you didn't if you didn't hit like if you ro rolled pretty bad and didn't get enough hits, then they might get into close combat and it might become a fight. Except for that you have saves and he basically doesn't have a save because a six up save is almost no save. But other than that, there's really not a lot to bring them for. So I, I stick by, bring orcs. Orcs are still the better choice. And other than that, don't bring crew. So between the two troop choices, and unfortunately there is only two, you got the crew and the fire warriors. You can still bring the dedicated transport, the devilfish, with, I guess, either. It doesn't really say specifically. It just says it can transport 10, 12 models. So. I'm thinking you could bring the Devilfish, and it has all the upgrades that they used to have, so I guess I should go over the vehicle upgrades a little bit. Disruption Pods, which is the one that everyone would worry about because it was the best item, has been changed a little bit. It's no longer a 5-up cover save when you're outside of 12 inches. It's just plus 1 to your cover save, always. So, if you move, you're a 4-up cover save. It's amazing. It's not quite as amazing, but without that minimum range, it means you're going to get 50-50 ignoring melta shots. It's a bit more expensive, namely three times as expensive, but it was always worth it. Like even, even with the triple the cost, there's still it's still plus one to your cover save. It goes from one in three to one in two, and that is just such a big difference. 
that I think it'll be worth it on every tank. Other than that, you can make it so your tanks can overwatch less than strength five. Flechettes, they've been changed a little bit. It's no longer, the, the way it used to be worded was any model making an attack against your tank took a strength four hit before the attack was made. Now it's any models in base to base with the tank take a strength four hit at initiative 10. So it's good and it's bad because there are ways to get around that by having line, the second ranks. For example, 30 boys charge your tank, 15 of them are able to do a full lap around it, and then the knobs in the outer rank. Now being a, just a regular boy, he can basically attack through the boys and hit your tank. And you can't hit him with the strength four. It's true all the other boys are gonna get slaughtered, but it's, it used to be a nice little kill them as they come at you. So up and down, up and down. Um, other than that, there isn't really a lot of really cool upgrades. There's the one upgrade that you can bring, and I can't think of the name of it for the life of me right now, but basically what it does is at the end of every turn on a six, you repair either immobilized or weapon destroyed. That's neat because Tau deserve a way to repair their own vehicles on the grounds that, unlike everyone else, they know how their stuff works. I guess Eldar and Necron do, but no one can. No one cares about that. Imperium doesn't know how their tanks work, and they have guys who can run around and fix them like, oh yeah, let me uh, replace that tread, and I'll retune the engine, and sure, I don't know how it works, but if I pray hard enough, it'll work anyway. Space Marine. Anyway, um, so Tau know how to fix their stuff now, and I think it actually fixes itself is really the way it's working, but that's an interesting little addition. Aside from that, they're all the same. You've got your black sun filters to ignore night fighting, and... Really, that's, that's all that matters. Oh, and the, the advanced stabilization system, the sensor spines, that's what I'm actually thinking of. Um, move through cover for your tanks. That's cool. So Devilfish, they're still there. Smart missile systems are awesome now. Being twin-linked, which is pretty much what you'll be getting when you buy these. They have a longer range than they used to. They're still 5.5, five, but they're homing and they ignore cover. So you don't need line of sight. They'll ignore the cover that your opponent's hiding behind and you're going to hit them more accurately and you're going to do it from further away. No reason not to take those. And of course your tank still has supporting fire. So your fire warriors get out of the back of the tank. They've got their ethereal with them. He says, okay, everybody shoot initial time. All the battle suits fired it up. They get three shots each. Tank just shoots as well. They get charged in the tank and the fire warriors overwatch. Tons of shots. Tons of orcs die because it's always against orcs. That's all I can say though. There's only the two troop choices. So stay tuned. We're going to do another video. This one's going to be about the big debate, which will be between elites, where we've got the Riptide, the Battle Suit, and the Stealth Suit. Really, we've only got two. So stay tuned for that many Wargamers. Happy Wargaming.